Barrett's esophagus is one of the more significant complications of gastroesophageal reflux disease, and it's primarily because we know that most cases of adenocarcinoma, or cancer of the esophagus, arise in patients who had Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus is well known to be a complication of reflux disease or heartburn, and it stands to reason then that if we could manage reflux better, we really end up managing esophageal cancer better. Barrett's metaplasia, or Barrett's esophagus as we say in a slang term, is a change in the lining of the esophagus that occurs from the regurgitation of gastric contents up into the esophagus repeatedly and over many years usually in time. It's not just the acid that's in the stomach that causes the problem. There are also other things in the, in the stomach, such as pancreatic enzymes, bacteria, and importantly, bile that has regurgitated from the duodenum into the stomach. All of these things combine in a fashion to cause damage to the lining of the esophagus and change the nature of the tissue that is there. The ordinary tissue in the lining of the esophagus is called squamous epithelium, and that changes literally to a different type of tissue, a columnar epithelium, which is commonly found in the intestines. So pathologists referred to Barrett's as intestinal metaplasia, and metaplasia is a pathologic word for change in tissue. So Barrett's is really a change in the lining of the esophagus from the normal squamous epithelium to a different type, which is the intestinal metaplasia. The importance of this is that Barrett's is well known to be of increased frequency in patients who have had reflux for a long time and have it more severely. It's present in about 15% of the people that we do endoscopy on for reflux, so we find it commonly, but it's not good enough just to look and think that we see Barrett's metaplasia there. The best way to prove the presence of Barrett's is to actually do biopsies, even if we don't see Barrett's metaplasia. So if we have a patient that we consider to be of high risk, they've had reflux for a long time, it's been severe, and in particularly in certain risk groups, uh, such as men and uh, older patients, we know that there's a higher risk of Barrett's, we will do biopsies. Now, Barrett's is important because we know that it markedly increases the risk of a patient developing adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. It is the link between heartburn and esophageal cancer. Not every patient with Barrett's obviously is going to develop cancer, so we need a way to figure out which ones are at risk, and that means doing frequent surveillance and repeated biopsies so that we can identify those patients that are undergoing further change that we know is going to increase their risk of cancer. That's called dysplasia, and dysplasia can be mild, in which, time, in which case we call it low-grade dysplasia, or it can become more advanced and more threatening, in which case it's called high-grade dysplasia. In fact, high-grade dysplasia might be so violent looking under the microscope that it's hard to tell whether or not it's actually cancer already or not. So we try never to let a person get to that point, obviously. So by doing regular endoscopy, we keep a patient under surveillance, and if we see any change in their Barrett's, we see the development of low-grade dysplasia or high-grade dysplasia, we know it's time to change our treatment approach. Now years ago, high-grade dysplasia was even a cause or a, a uh, a diagnosis for which an esophagectomy might be recommended. So in other words, we might remove the esophagus simply because a patient had high-grade dysplasia. Well, fortunately, technology has advanced to the point where we can now treat those conditions uh, without doing surgery. And typically, there are two, two treatment options we have. Now, we know that patients with Barrett's esophagus, if left alone, their Barrett's will get worse. We know that by treating them with medication, we reduce the likelihood that their Barrett's will advance. Unfortunately, medication is not as protective as we would hope, and about 10% of those patients are still going to progress even on medication. Surgery does somewhat better. When you put together all of the, uh, all of the studies that have looked at this, we know that patients that have surgery have a lessened risk of developing cancer. In fact, they have a about a 40% or so chance overall that you'll see some degree of regression or uh, lessening of the degree of Barrett's. But even surgery is not an assurance that the patient's Barrett's will not go on to something else.
In a case where we really want to treat the Barrett's most effectively, we have radiofrequency ablation. And radiofrequency ablation is a procedure that's done by putting a probe on the end of the uh, typical flexible endoscope, inserting it down the lower esophagus, and under direct vision, burning out the areas of Barrett's metaplasia from the lining of the esophagus. We have other tools that will do the same thing, perhaps in a balloon shape or something of that nature, but these are all typically done endoscopically, really with no more, uh, no more fanfare than the typical, typical endoscopic exam. We know that treating Barrett's metaplasia using radiofrequency reduces the risk of developing cancer in those patients, and that's a, typically a recommended treatment for patients who have low-grade dysplasia or more, or high-grade dysplasia, or those who have long segments of Barrett's metaplasia, meaning more than about three centimeters in, in total measured length. And again, we may look at patients and decide someone is of particularly higher risk uh, certainly older males, again, fall into that category. Finally, if there's an area in, of high-grade dysplasia, let's say that we can't burn out using the radiofrequency technique, it's possible to go in with an endoscope and do what's called endoscopic mucosal resection, where we create a uh, raised area in the lining of the esophagus by injecting saline underneath the uh, lining of the esophagus and snaring out a piece of the lining. So we can actually remove a portion of the lining of the esophagus without having to do surgery. And that's, uh, that's an available treatment for high-grade dysplasia. And in fact, even early cancers can be treated that way. So the importance of, of Barrett's metaplasia is that we know it leads to cancer. Once it's been identified, it has to be followed, and it has to be biopsied in order to identify it with certainty. The typical recommendation for a patient who has non-dysplastic Barrett's esophagus, meaning they have Barrett's esophagus but no dysplasia, is that they have endoscopy every three to five years. Uh, and that would include doing biopsies every two centimeters up and down their esophagus wherever there is Barrett's esophagus. If the patient has the long segment Barrett's I mentioned where more than three centimeters, then clearly they have a higher risk. They should be getting surveillance on an annual basis. If we find any dysplasia, then we're going to take many more biopsies or recommend that the patient have one of the radiofrequency options or something of that nature. In the end, the most important thing is to identify patients who have had reflux for a long time, those who have had severe symptoms, and make sure they get their endoscopy so that we can identify Barrett's metaplasia, because if we don't know it's there, we can't handle it.